One of the most important things that you can have on your Linux systems is monitors that tell you what's going on. What's going on with your CPU, your memory, your storage, your network. And more importantly, you want to be able to go back over time and review what's happened in the past as well as what's going on now. Why? They alert you to things that are going on that could potentially be overloading your system, you might have memory problems that you are running out of memory or having issues with memory. Your storage may be having issues, your hard drives, particularly spinning rust drives, may be wearing out. You need to know these things before they happen. Nobody wants to be surprised by hardware failures. And so today, I'm gonna to show you using uh, the Performance Copilot tools and Grafana, how to do that. You can put it together yourself. When it comes to performance metrics uh, and data collection, what we need is that we need a tool that can collect from multiple machines. We also want to have some tool that allows us to display it quickly in a format that we can grasp. And that usually is graphics, right? A picture is worth a thousand words. Uh, so we're going to be using Performance Copilot. Don't confuse that with the Copilot web web tools. Those are the Copilot web tools are used to administer a uh, a computer system. The Performance Copilot allows me to extract information from a lot of different sources in your system: the kernel, the device drivers, your network cards, your storage devices. All of those things that can extract a lot of different telemetry from them save those in a time series form. What do we mean by that? Time series means that I'm collecting it from and posting it with the time and date that I collected it on. Why is that important? Well, it allows me to go back over time and see how the system is performing. Maybe it, how, how was this thing performing a year ago as to compare to what it is now? That helps me to understand when I'm going to have to add additional resources in terms of hardware in order to satisfy the needs of the, of the applications I'm running. That's as true it is as in production and corporate environments as it is for you at home. Don't you want to? Do you want to be surprised by? Oh gosh, this this game I just got. I can't run it. It doesn't. My system isn't powerful enough to do it. So what do we need to do this? Well, the first thing I need is I need a distribution of some kind, a Linux distribution. You can you can run this uh, these tools on Windows and Mac OS. So if you want to monitor those systems, you, those you can. You absolutely can. But for today, what you will need in order to collect all that data is you're going to need a, a, a Linux distribution. That can be Red Hat, Fedora, Ubuntu, Debian, Gen2, Arch. Unless you're getting out into some really esoteric uh, Linux distribution, you probably have the packages to do this. Oh, I always forget SUSE. Yes, SUSE as well. You can definitely do it on SUSE. I'm sorry, SUSE people. I don't mean to, to uh, neglect you. So you need two packages. The first one you need is the Performance Copilot package, and you'll need 5.1.1 or higher for that. I think there's a patch version dash 3 that they always talk about on the 5.1.1. But that's what you'll need as the base. And I'll show you what to install today. The second thing you'll need is Grafana. And Grafana has a plug-in structure. What doesn't today? So you need the base Grafana, and then you need Grafana for PCP, which allows you to, to create both the source to create a data source with and the mechanism to understand the data uh, to produce graphs and so forth. So you need both of those pieces in order to do that. The uh, Performance Copilot actually has a number of components. The first one is the service itself. And the service itself is what is responsible for managing inbound data. The second one is PM Proxy. PM Proxy allows me to pass the data that's in the Performance Copilot to other applications. So because I'm using Grafana, obviously I'm going to need the proxy to do that. And the third piece is I'm going to need a PM Logger, and PM Logger will be down the road. It won't be today, but PM Logger is used to collect data from multiple systems and then 
collect it all on a central point, and then I can then graph and figure out what's going on with those servers from there. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, so I have 6.0, and I said I needed 5.11 or higher, so this is fine. PCP0 config will be the same name of the, as the package on Ubuntu. On Debian, it's just called PCP, uh, and it will automatically load the configuration. The reason why we want the zero config uh, on Fedora and Red Hat is that it already sets up everything that we need, so I don't have to spend you know any more time than necessary in getting it to capture enough data. So let's go ahead and install that. Okay. I think that's PMC. There we go. So you can see it's enabled, but it's not started. So we'll go ahead and start that. Check it running. What we want to do right now is just kind of run some tests to see if uh, if the performance copilot is installed and it looks like it might be working okay and that we have it actually running so that it is collecting data. So let's take a look. Uh, if you do a PM info by itself, it's going to dump 3,709 <laughs> different um, the pieces of data that you can collect. So <laughs> I don't think we want to do that, but we can we can look at a group of them. We can kind of narrow this down a little bit. And I'll do, oh, I don't know. How about the first five? And so, yeah, you can see that those are the names of the different uh, collections that we can read data from. So well, to be able to pull data out of it, we have the performance metric reporter, which is called PM Rep. And I can just put in, that should be all I need. Let's see what it looks like. So it's going to come back with, this is my one minute interval, five minutes. This is sort of like uh, the same loading that you might see. Oh, I don't think I have H top, but I do have top. So let's bring that up. So it's going to be similar to the load average up here that you see up here. That Yeah, I only want five samples. Now, if you don't, if you just want this to go on and on, I think you can just, <laughs> if you just want it to keep tracking, well, that's that's great, right? But not very interesting, is it? There we go. And now we can start it. And we'll wait for it to come up. If you're collecting information with PCP, uh, one thing I didn't say is that if you're collecting information with PCP, rule of thumb, you'll need about 100 megabytes of memory for every system that you're collecting from, and you'll need about 200 megabytes of data storage for per each system that you're collecting on. Now, don't forget to count the one that you're, you're, you're running Grafana on because you want to monitor that as well, obviously. All right, so I need to open up the firewall again for this. Okay, and then we'll, we'll go ahead and reload this again. So now my firewall should be open and I should be able to access this from anywhere. So the next thing I want to do is let's go to Grafana and take a look at the system that we just got installed. So um, I'm going to just go to localhost. And it's on port 3000. For the first time to log in, 
log in as admin admin. Yeah, yeah okay. And then the first thing it's going to say is, uh, hey, uh, you need to change your password, which is a really good idea. So I'll go ahead and do that. All right, and we don't need this. So this is the uh, welcome page for Grafana. The first thing we want to do is go down here to this gear icon and select plugins because what we got, what we want to pull in here is the performance, uh, the PCP performance plugin, and that will be right there. So we'll go ahead and click on that. And we will enable, it says invalid signature. I'm not worrying about that too much. Uh, but yeah, okay. So the, the, the plugin is now installed. And the next thing is I need to go create a data source for this. So let's add a data source. Let's come down here. Now there's two of them. We'll work on this one in a, in a bit. We're not quite ready for that, but we just want to see if we're able to collect any data from the systems at all. So let's put in the PCP vector data source to begin with. This one, uh, the reddest one will work later, but it won't work today. So it gives you an example here of uh, what URL to use, and, and that is the, the, exactly the one we want. So I got to type it in. Even though it's there, I don't, I wish they would put this so that, uh, yeah, but they don't. It's 44322. Pretty sure that's right. Let me just make sure. 44322. Yep. So then you'll want to do a save and test and make sure that the data source is working. And it looks like it is. So the next thing is I can go back to my dashboards here. And then you'll notice a list is coming up. So remember, these two here are Redis, and so they're not going to work right now because they don't even have Redis installed or configured. So let's just collect this one and see what we get. This should give us kind of a general view of the system. Now, this is showing us for the last five minutes. So when you're, when you're actually running this uh, yeah, and collecting real data that on systems, you'll probably want to you know, make this a little longer. But since we just started, we don't have much data to work with. So if you'll notice here um, on how um, Grafana works is... This is the name of my data source, and so if I want to, I can have the same setup, but I can change my data sources over to look at other data sources. This is my, uh, my if I want to put in special variables, I can do that, and then this is my host variable. Up here, you can do things like uh, I, can make, I can make the dashboard editable so that I can make changes to this. Now, the default one is you can't. So what I would recommend is if you're going to make this editable, save it as a new one, and then you can make changes to this particular one. But right now, you can't make any changes to this at all. So this, so one of the things you can do is, now this view is kind of the general view. So it's giving you memory and network and storage and CPU So over time. And then it tracks by each CPU on the system. This one is tracking by each drive that it finds on the system. Same with the uh, memory, as how much memory is in use as a percentage. And then you have transmit and network uh, utilization. But let's say I wanted more information about the network. So, yeah, you can, well, this one does is a bad example. So let's look at maybe storage. And I want to see IOPS and average block size over time. And this, I mean, if you see this, this is probably telling me that, uh, yeah, I have excessively small operation size operations for storage. So that is indicating a possible problem with the storage configuration already. That maybe my, uh, uh, yeah, the operations that provide higher bandwidth and lower operations are probably not going to be optimal, right? So it's probably suggesting to me that I go make some changes to the file system structure in order to, to be more 
uh, have a better ability to, to do storage in a faster way. So that already it's finding issues that, that I would not necessarily have known about unless I had run the commands from the command line looking for them specifically. Uh, memory, you get uh, some information about, you know, swapping and... Uh, this is a this is memory reclaim efficiency. Now I don't have a lot of data in here, but then I don't have much of a load on the system either. So yeah, um, uh, hopefully you don't have much of a load. So these other ones down here uh, allow you to check out some of the other things you can do. Like uh, so the the CPU is the same as that drop down list I think, except for. It, it has this one that doesn't seem to be collecting any data at the moment. So if I was on a multiple processor system, I could look track and see what was going on on each machine. So at this point, every time that you bring up Grafana, it's going to start collecting data again because it's not persisting the data that's stored. So the next time, I'll show you how to persist the data. And then we can come back and we can look at, yeah, uh, time series data for whatever time period that we've collected for. So, but right now, yeah, you're, it's all real-time data, so you're not going to save anything uh, off to be able to go back and review it. Until next time, I hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you again soon. Have a happy new year, y'all, and bye for now.